Welcome to Math Clinic with Jenny Fraction. Remember, my name is Jennifer, but in Math Clinic, I'll be called Jenny Fraction. And this is our first section in Math Clinic. The topic I'm taking today is a topic attached to my name, and that is fraction. What is fraction? Before we, we say the definition of fraction, let's take this illustration. Mommy goes to the market and buys a whole orange. Say after me, whole. This is mommy's whole orange. And she has four children to share the orange. Now, let's help mommy share the orange into four parts. We share and we share. Can you see my whole has been divided into different parts? We have whole numbers. Do you know whole numbers? Numbers like five is a whole number. One is also a whole number. Now we have shared one whole orange into four parts. Now, this is one part out of four parts. This is one part out of four parts. And this is one part out of four parts. And this one out of four parts. Now, the four children takes one part each out of the whole orange. And there, we bring a definition of fraction, which says a fraction is a part of a whole. What is fraction? Fraction is a part of a whole. You can see that we have each part out of a whole orange. Now, if you're watching me, repeat after me. Fraction is a part of a whole. Like I said before, we have whole numbers. Five, one. Can you say whole numbers wherever you are? Just give yourself examples of whole numbers. Good. I'll give you examples of all the whole numbers we have. 36 is a whole number. Now, there are different ways of identifying fractions. A fraction has two parts. One number up and another number down. That is what differentiates it from a whole number. Do you know that fractions are also numbers? Yes, fractions are numbers, but they are formed from whole numbers. So, when you see a number that has two parts, one is living upstairs and another is living downstairs, it's a fraction. So, fraction has two parts, up and down. Can you see the difference now? Is this a whole number? No, it's a fraction. Another example of fraction, we have 5 up over 6. This is also a fraction. Hmm, two numbers, one up and one down. They have their names. The number up is called numerator. This number up is called numerator. Can you say that, everyone? Numerator. Okay. Let's have a clear board. Okay, I'm going to use another example that is 5 up over 6. And I said the number up is called numerator. While the number down is called denominator. 
mi ne to. Let's take that again. A fraction has two parts. One number up and another number down. The number up is called numerator, while the number down is called denominator. There are some common fractions that we see every day and every time in mathematics. Let's take the common fractions. The first common fraction is 1 up over 2. We call this half. What did I say? Half. We have another common fraction which is 1 up over 4. We call this quarter. What this means is that your whole number is divided into 4 and we have only one part out of it. This means 1 out of 4. I said this is half and any number up over 4 is quarter. So if I have 2 over 4, I'll say 2 quarter. Say that, 2 quarter. Now, do you know how best you can enjoy mathematics? You repeat when you're asked to repeat. You talk when you're asked to talk. You have to participate when you're going through a math class. In that way, you enjoy mathematics. Okay? Now, if you have 3 up over 4, we say 3 quarter. Say that. Good. 3 quarter. So don't forget, when you have any number up over 4, we call it quarter. There is another common fraction we call up over 3. So if I have 1 up over 3, I'll say 1 third. Say that. 1 third. Now if I have 2 up over 3, I'll say 2 third. And that brings us to naming fractions. Now we go to naming fractions. How do we name fractions? We name fractions by starting from the number on top. Remember I said the number on top is called numerator. So if I have 8 over 9, I'll say 8 Ninth. When I'm naming the denominator, I have to put a th. So I'll say eight ninths. That is the name of this fraction. So if I have five over ten, I'll say five. That's the numerator. Tenth. Remember, you put your th. So I have five tenths. If I have 3 over 12, what do I call this? I'll say 3 twelfths. Again, 3 twelfths. Remember, a th. So when you're naming a fraction, you call out your numerator. And when you say the denominator, you put your th. Are we good to go? Okay. The next topic we're going to look at in fraction is the types of fraction. What are the types of fraction? We have three types of fraction. The first type of fraction is a proper fraction. Now, before we mention the types of fraction, let's look at the following. We have 3 over 8. I have 9 over 4. Then I have 6 whole number, 1 over 5. Can we see these three different fractions? Looking at this, you can find out that the number on top, that is the numerator, is small. While the number under, the denominator, is big. So, 
It's a normal thing to have your fraction like this. The second fraction has the number on top, which is the numerator, big, while the number under is small. Hmm, it's just like telling a small boy to carry his daddy on his head. And the boy is crying, I can't carry daddy, I can't carry daddy. Is it normal? No, it's not. So now let's look at these two fractions. This is called proper fraction. Because yes, mommy can carry her daughter on her head and daddy can carry his son on his shoulder. So it's a proper fraction. Proper fraction is when the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Let me give you more examples. We have five up over 10. Can you see? The number up is smaller then the number down. It's a proper fraction. Another example, we have 10 over 50. Can you see it? 10 is smaller than 50. That is a proper fraction. We move to the next fraction we have here. The number on top is bigger than the number down. This is called improper. Say that. Improper. It's not proper for a small number or a small person to carry a big person. So if your small number is down and your big number is up, it is improper. So this is an improper fraction. That is when you have a big number on top and a small number down. I'll give you more examples. I have 20 over 6. Can you see? 6 is already shouting. I can't carry you. Help me. 6 is smaller than 20. So it's an improper fraction. We have 15 over 2 is also an improper fraction. Do you know that 4 over 3 is also an improper fraction? Because 4 on top is bigger than 3. And the last fraction I have here, I have a whole number, remember? And a proper fraction. A whole number and a proper fraction. They are together. So when you have a whole number and a proper fraction, we call it mixed fraction. Say that. Mixed. Again, mixed. When you have a whole number and a proper fraction, we call it mixed fraction. And then I've come to the end of this session. I'll meet you in another session still talking more on fractions. But before I go, Let's quickly go through what we've learned today. What is fraction? Fraction is a part of a whole. Repeat after me. Fraction is a part of a whole. And I said a fraction has two parts. One number up and another number down. The number up is called numerator. The number down is called denominator. We talked about common fractions. 1 up over 2, we call it half. We talked about quarter, that is up over 4. And we talk about third, that is up over 3. And we also talked about the types of fractions. We have three types of fraction, proper fraction, improper fraction, and mixed fraction. A proper fraction, the numerator is smaller than the denominator. While improper fraction, the numerator is bigger than the denominator. And the last fraction, we have a mixed fraction, a whole number and a proper fraction. Now let's look at this. Is this a mixed fraction? No. Remember I said a whole number and a proper. But this is a whole number and improper. So we don't have this in mathematics. This is wrong. We have 
Inside we have six, four, up over five. See you in our next class. We'll be talking more on fractions. Bye-bye.